One of the things that can be a challenge when you're going through acquisition is all these different ERPs that then become acquired and you have three or four or five different systems running and trying to centralize. And I know that your company transitioned to a new ERP system last year, and now you're going to be involved with integrating five acquired companies into this new ERP system this year. So what are some of the challenge that, challenges that you've had in doing this? Um, so a little bit of background here. Last year in July, um, we went live with the full um, D365 finance and operations module of our ERP. Um, and though everyone wants an off the shelf product uh, and wants to avoid customization, um, we were one of the first chemical companies, chemical batch companies that utilize D365 to migrate from a sunsetting platform AX. So unfortunately, we customized probably more than we bargained for. And with that, of course, comes a, you know, a lot of depth that's needed in the supply, in the IT piece of the supply chain partnership to manage and those batch jobs make sure they're running, um, make sure they're healthy um, and, uh, you know, regulating that across the network. So just getting the whole network stabilized after we went live with our legacy sites was a challenge in and of itself. I mean, our procurement module for three weeks, we couldn't buy raw materials. And then suddenly our MRP uh, was sending all the wrong signals on the fourth week and we bloated our inventory, which compounded all of the struggles that we were still trying to claw back from a cash perspective, uh, you know, from COVID. Um, and for those who are unaware, the chemical industry was bombarded with also the Texas freeze, which locked up a lot of our base chemicals, um, you know, in the Texas, Louisiana corridor um, and forced us uh, to make significant changes in how we procure multiple suppliers, so on and so forth. Um, so compounding all of that, just trying to stabilize the legacy base was a challenge. Um, but on top of that, we have a integration team, which is made up of subject matter experts kind of from each of the different functions, customer service, um, you know, finance, invoicing, um, all of the, you know, transactions related to cost. Um, and then we have a group um, that manages our warehouse module um, and our manufacturing module. Um, and this year is going to be an extremely aggressive year because we put on the back burner due to all of the uh, instability in the supply chain during COVID, um, you know, five plus integrations. And I don't think we've ever done more than two integrations in one year. Um, not but a month and a half ago, one of my largest sites, um, which was acquired about two years ago, um, that was very deep rooted in a previous ERP system called Navision, um, had really robust processes, went live on this new ERP system. And I'm sure this will be common that you've heard before, Sarah, but all I hear every day from my plant team is too many clicks, too many clicks <laughs> to do the same thing I did in one or two. Um, you know, data in the sense of, you know, just visualizations to be able to do your day to day job is in a very immature state because we're still rebuilding that core data warehouse and migrating all that into visualizations just to see all of the fields that you need to manage an open order report, um, all of the fields that you would need to see to, you know, procure raw materials, to release work orders to the shop floor, so on and so forth. Um, so we're in this kind of stage of like, okay, we implemented the core ERP system, but we really have to go back um, to our starting implementation and say, what do we want to do better to help every integration after this and to also help our base um, plants who are struggling through inventory control modules and just managing cycle count programs, which was completely not, you know, totally set up the way we wanted it to. Um, item movements from the floor to the kettle, which is where we manufacture, to pack out, um, consumption, everything that touches each other and that um, integration and migration kind of needs a revamp and a phase two. So we're trying to balance our priorities between do we continue um, to plow through our strategy or do we go back and reset and say, if we did an after action review, what would we do better? What modules would we fix? What integrations would we fix? And then 
and what do we need from a resourcing strategy on the IT and the operations side so we have good partners who have the subject matter expertise in the system and have lived it, right? Um, because a lot of the functions have lived it, um, but our integration team has just deployed it. <laughs> so a lot of that is falling on a lot of the core functions, um, including myself, um, uh, which I really never thought I'd get that deep in the guts of our code between our uh, warehouse module, um, you know, and our manufacturing module, but it's just really the state of where we are in our infancy and in trying to completely determine what we want to be and how do we want the system to support us doing that without over-customizing and creating this resource constraint um, for us in totality.